everybody and welcome to Flock Talk. I did a video a little bit ago on how to exercise a bird with clipped wings and since then little noodle boy here has grown all of his flight feathers in. Not all of them but <laughs> for him to actually be able to fly. He's got about 10 of his beautiful blue feathers back in and he's supposed to have around 20 or so. Um, but he can fully fully fly now so I thought we'd do a video on kind of that weird transitioning between a bird that's clipped and a bird that's growing their feathers because I know for a lot of people, I know for me, it was a really big struggle trying to make sure that they were still getting enough exercise without hurting their feathers or breaking their feathers and teaching them how to fly, making sure they aren't going to be clumsy and all that sorts of stuff. So I figured we'd have a little bit of fun today and show you all the sorts of things I was doing with Newt over this past month or so while he was growing his lovely wings back in. So one of the most challenging things I found with Newt in particular here was that when they start to get their wings back in, he just wanted to jump. And I mean, that's pretty natural. He's got his wings back in. He's gonna wanna fly. He thinks he can fly, he can go for it. This guy grew one feather in. It was the furthest one on the tip of his wing and it was the longest feather. And immediately he thought that meant he could fly everywhere. So he started trying to jump off things and I had to keep running across the room trying to catch him because he couldn't fly, he would fall like a brick, but he thought he could for whatever bizarre reason. Um, so we had to find some creative ways to make sure that he could burn out that energy and do the flying he wanted to do without putting himself in harm's way and having him hit his feathers and break them or anything like that. So one of the easiest things we did with him was making sure he could reach everywhere. One of the biggest reasons why Newt was flying was because he wanted to be on the bed where we were or he wanted to get from the bed to the cage or wherever he wanted to go and he just couldn't make it there so he'd try and jump. So one of the easiest things we did and I find is really critical and helpful is to make sure the bird can get everywhere they want to go. This does tend to mean you've got ladders and swings and all sorts of weird things dangling all over your house for a while but it helps them be able to get where they want to go and explore where they want to go without the restriction of thinking they have to jump to get there. And this was one of the biggest things that helped Newt because almost every single day he'd be trying to jump from the top of this cage over to the bed that you guys are sitting on right now. And he would end up falling or one of us would have to run and grab him because he was gonna jump. He was sticking his wings out like, I'ma do it, I'ma jump. And it usually ended pretty poorly for the little guy. <laughs> so what we did is we've got a bunch of ladders and things that we hung off the cage and we'd hook it onto the edge of our bed and we'd hook it, we've got all the seeds and jars on the back of the door and we'd have ways for him to access all these things so that he didn't feel the need to jump and end up potentially hurting himself. The second thing we did to help Newt was make sure he was burning out his energy correctly. He's a conure, he's got a lot of energy as you can tell already. He was just taking a nap and now he's trying to crawl in my mouth and chew on my hair. Like, it's, he's a toddler, he's got no stop to his energy and so that was one of the big reasons why birds will try and jump the second they think they can fly when they really can't. Um, so making sure he was burning off his energy was really important and one of the biggest things we did for him was A, making sure that all of his toys were filled with foraging opportunities that kept him busy, that kept him mentally engaged because even though it's not physically draining, a lot of the mental capacity they have to use to forage and figure out retreats or hiding is very tiresome. If you've been to school and had to sit there and study, you know how exhausted you can feel by the end of the day. Even though you weren't running and doing a lot of physical things, it's still mentally exhausting and taxing to do all those activities. So putting in foraging activities, switching up his toys very often, keeping him very mentally distracted was a really important thing to keep him from trying to fly and jump with all that excess energy that he had. The other thing you can do is, of course, the physical side of things, making sure that he's burning off all that physical energy. In the flight exercises for clipped birds uh, video, you did things like having uneven surfaces and doing really short distance recall, which can also be incredibly important here because it's still ways for him to run and burn off that energy. With him in particular, we put him on the floor and we got him to recall by running, because that way he was still learning kind of flight recall but he was running and burning off all that energy so when it came to him wanting to jump off the cage he wasn't gonna just go for it because he was a little more tired out and he burned off a lot of that energy. Alright, so you've distracted your bird, you've given them plenty of toys, you've got lots of physical activities for them to be doing, you're playing with them, got them on your hands, 
you know, flipping them upside down, getting them to kind of stretch their wings and work out as much as possible. But what do you do when your birds hit that point where they're kind of starting to glide now? They're getting a little more explorative with their flight, let's say, where they're trying to fly and they just can't land, or they're kind of spinning, or you can tell that their flight is really wobbly and all over the place, or they're shooting up high and don't know how to get low. How do you teach your bird how to fly? Like, how, do you, how are you going to do that when you aren't a bird that's going to sit there flopping and swinging, showing your bird how to be a bird? Um, it's actually pretty simple. Um, every bird is going to be different with how good they are with flight. It depends when their wings were clipped, how poorly they were clipped, if they were clipped evenly, unevenly, how many feathers were cut. Um, all that sorts of stuff comes into play with how you have to go about teaching a bird to fly. One of the easiest things to do is going to be flight recall. And I've got a couple tutorials on how to teach your birds to recall from perches to you, from person to person, or even just flying laps around a room. Um, but when it comes to a bird that's just getting their wings back and they're just trying to figure things out, the most important thing is that you stay close to them. Even though it looks like they're super gutsy and you think they can go really far, it can be very, very dangerous for a bird that doesn't know how to fly to actually go those further distances, even if you think they can fly that far. And the reason for this, one of the biggest reasons for this, aside from the fact that they're not going to be as exercised or experienced and they're going to be wobbly and potentially crash, is actually because their lungs and their heart aren't used to that amount of exertion. Birds that have had their wings clipped by a very early age, or birds that haven't fledged before they've had their wings cut, can actually end up having weakened hearts and weakened lungs because it wasn't developed properly, because they weren't flying and actually exerting the amount of energy that they normally would if they had kept their wings from birth till now. So what can actually happen is if you get a bird that's just learning to fly and you get overexcited and you go, hey, let's fly all the way across the room because they've got the wings for it, but they don't have the physical capacity for it, um, your bird can actually become exhausted mid-flight they can start panting and breathing heavily, breathing heavily, sorry, and they can actually pass out. They can start to black out while they're flying because their lungs and things aren't built to sustain the flight yet because they haven't had their wings for that long. Are you done? You chewing my earrings? So when you're doing flight recall and things like that with your bird, keep in mind that it doesn't matter how many feathers they have, it matters how strong they are. You want to start really close with the recall, getting them just to jump, just to slowly stick their wings out a little bit, and slowly work the distances further and further until you see that they're not panting when they land, they're landing really stably, they're not flopping all over the place and shooting too high or, you know, spiraling out of control. You want to make sure that those really short distances they have control over. A second you start taking things really, really far, your birds don't fully know how to control things, they think they can do it, but as soon as they actually do it, they can't. They need the time to practice and build up the strength for it. The same way that if you wanted to go into marathon running, you're not just gonna run out the door and go, hey, I've got the legs for it, so I'm just gonna run. You've got to sit there and train your body for it. Your bird has to do the same with flying. It doesn't matter that they've flown before. If their wings have been clipped for a while, they're not gonna have the strength for it, they're not gonna have the skill for it. So you need to take the time to slowly, slowly, slowly do recall training and get them landing and really gaining control over the flight as opposed to focusing on longer distances. So how do you teach a bird how to land? Um, this is something a bird will know right off the bat, you know, stick their feet out, they know how to do it, it's built into their systems, they understand it. It's just that they need time to practice it and finesse it. It's going to take time for them to get it right. So by doing those shorter distance recalls, as I mentioned before, it helps them practice landing without as much risk. If you want to do recalls over something like a bed or over a couch cushion, that way if they do miss, they can land on something soft. They're not going to immediately think that flying equals falling and hurting themselves. You want them to know that flying and trying to fly is going to be relaxing and fun and something that's not going to cause them harm. Um, when it comes to landing and flight control, if your birds are able to go further distances now and they're landing pretty good, pretty well, 
what you want to then work on is making them move a little bit. You want to work on getting them to fly around objects, you want to work on them being able to turn around, and you want them to learn how to land on different surfaces. Um, one of the best ways to work on this is through stationing, so that's when you get a bird to fly from you to an object, or from one object to another object, where you can point at something and the bird's going to go fly and land on that. Just because you're, you can put your hand like this and your bird's going to fly and land on it, doesn't mean they're going to be able to land on, say, the side of a cage, or a perch that's a slightly different texture, or something that's not perfectly flat. It takes practice for them to learn to kind of turn their bodies and land on something on its side, and that's something we need to practice with them, because say you're down in your, your basement or whatever, and you're playing a game, and the bird flies out of nowhere, and is all of a sudden in a situation where it doesn't know where to land. A bird who doesn't know how to land or doesn't know where to land anywhere except for one place is going to sit there flying in circles until they either crash into something, exhaust themselves until they pass out, or they're going to try and land and flop and fall over and it's not going to end very well. When you're teaching your bird to fly, you want to make sure that they know how to land not only on you and on a flat surface, but on things that are unstable and weird and up high or at all sorts of different weird angles. This way when they get into those situations, they have control over the situation and they aren't going to panic. Once Newt in particular was a little more stable with his flight, where he was able to recall really far, he was landing well, he was understanding how to fly without shooting super high and then trying to figure out how to come back down, I started working on something that I like to call follow me around or like chase me. Um, where basically I start running <laughs> and Newt will take off and try to follow me. And the reason why I love doing these is because the bird doesn't know where you're going to go, it doesn't know where it's going to land, and it has no idea what's happening. There's no predictability in their flight path. Once your bird is super stable and confident with their flight, this is something I absolutely love to work on because it gets your birds controlling their pace, controlling the angles that they fly, and just gives them a lot more precision with the way that they move around. With things like that, it makes it a lot easier where if your bird is all of a sudden flying around a room, they know how to slow down in the air, they're going to know how to speed up, they're going to know how to turn on a dime, because they're used to chasing you around in circles and whatever else you tend to do when you run and have your bird chasing after you. At first, I just kind of run and get them to land on me, because they don't really know when I'm going to stop. And then I go more complicated where I'll start doing figure eights or I'll run a big lap around the kitchen or whatever it is. This way the bird is not knowing what's going to happen next. They can't plan out how they're going to fly or where they're going to land. So it makes it a lot more fun for them because it's exciting and they don't know what's happening. And it also builds up a lot more of that strength and a lot more of that precise flying that they really need to have in order to be good, strong flyers. If you're going to have a bird that's flighted, you need to kind of take the responsibility of knowing that they need to be good at it. <laughs> it is very possible to have a flighted bird that's just a dangerous hazard to themselves because they were never taught how to fly, they've never had to do a 180 in the air because there's something there. If you take the time to train them and really teach them to be good and strong with their flight, it makes them a lot safer in the air, it makes there far less risk for them to fly into objects and hurt themselves, and overall it just makes it a lot safer and happier experience for everyone involved, because your bird's going to have a lot of muscle strength, their heart and lungs are going to be super strong, which makes things like vet visits a lot easier, because now when they're drawing blood it's not as hard on the heart, because the heart is a thousand times stronger than it was before, and it also just makes the bird safer. And that's one of the biggest complaints I have with people is they'll sit there and say I clip my bird because it's safer for them. Well, having a bird clipped and flighted can both be equally unsafe if you don't teach your bird how to fly. If you don't give them the skills necessary to be able to control their ability to fly, that's when being flighted can become hazardous. Because if your bird doesn't have control over what it's doing, then it's just as hazardous as a bird that has no control over flying at all. If you're working on landing with your bird, one of the things I absolutely loved to do when I was back in my house before um, was actually get the birds to fly down the stairs. Um, when it comes to flying, you find that a lot of the time you're practicing flying in straight lines or very slow inclines. Um, when it comes to something like a staircase, you can get the bird to drop straight down, which works out a lot of different muscles. Um, say your bird were to ever get out and it flies up to the top of a tree, you've done all this practice with them recalling and you know how to get them down, 
but your bird may not have enough strength in its, in its muscles to actually fly down on an angle that steep because they've done so much practice just on these sort of very delicate angles. When it comes to things that are almost vertical, it becomes a lot more difficult for them to actually fly like that. It takes a lot more power and a lot more strength to actually move at those degrees. So doing things like flying down staircases was a really great way that I found to help teach my birds to use those different muscles and really get them properly exercised and kind of critiquing the way that they fly because somebody tends to be just a little bit clumsy. Thanks. Love the foot in my mouth. It is my favorite. It's tasty. So that's gonna about do it for this video. I'm sorry it's a bit of a short one. I just needed to get something out because it's been a little while since I posted. Um, hopefully things will become a little bit more regular here. Over these next couple months a lot of things are going to be changing and I'm hoping that getting a proper recording area set up again is going to be in the works there. So thank you guys for your patience. Hopefully this video has been helpful and given you a couple little ideas on how to handle that really awkward stage where birds think they can fly and they really can't quite yet. Um, I'm excited to hear back from all you guys and all your lovely stories and comments that you guys post down below. I am always reading them whether I respond or not. Um, thank you so much for watching, thank you for sticking with me, and I will see you all in the next video. Bye! Oh, big stretch! Oh, such a pretty boy! Can I have my hair? Am I allowed my own hair? I'm gonna take it. Thank you. You see the boy.